G'day and welcome to another Almost Vanilla. This time we're going to take a look at a few more mods. The first one I want to look at is the Cult Command console pack. This one is now kept up to date by Ixta, one of my all time favourite modders on Space Engineers. And it adds something that I think is absolutely missing from the core game. You may have noticed that in this base there's no command or control centre. Partially because it was designed to be a one person base, but also because the vanilla blocks don't have a lot of ability to show that kind of environment. You can use things like programmable blocks, but the cockpits just don't feel right to me. And that's where this mod comes in. So we'll head over to this little building over here where I've set up a room that illustrates this point, as I definitely struggled to create that vibe here. You've got two different types of commands or pilot consoles in the vanilla game. You've got this one with a seat and a large panel, and you've got the same control seat with a smaller display panel. Not a great deal of variety there. Then you've got programmable blocks, and then you've got LCDs. And with some clever design or using small ship blocks, you can create something that looks quite impressive. But it takes a lot of work and even when I've played as much as I have, I still struggle to do that. I still struggle to come up with something that I feel looks like a real command center. The sort of command center I had in mind were the sorts of things like in the Kennedy Space Center or in some nuclear missile silo or something like that with lots of screens everywhere and lots of controls. You don't really know what any of them are for, but you assume there's a whole lot of data and a whole lot of people needed to control all of the different systems that are involved. So, that's where this pack comes in. If we head through into the next room, we'll see examples of all of the different blocks in the pack. We'll use this floor mounted switch, turn on the lights and have a look around. And you can already feel this place feels different. This pack was originally created in the DirectX 9 version and brought into DirectX 11, I'm pretty sure by Ixta. And it has barely changed, yet it still feels right within Space Engineers. It's still got that rough feel, but also that high attack feel. The pack comes with all sorts of shapes of consoles. You've got inside corners, outside corners, multiple different straight sections. And if you want, you can combine these in all sorts of shapes and forms, a little bit like I've done here. You can make things pretty varied. Let's take a closer look at each part, and we'll start with this floor mounted switch. This thing is just a switch. It's the same as the button panels from the vanilla set, except it's only got a single button on it. One of the downsides of this panel is there's no way to access the control panel from it. You can only interact with the switch, either to set what it's going to control, or to actually use the switch. This wall mounted switch doesn't have that downside. It has the large button, then it's also got this small panel here, which you can use to access the terminal or the console or the control panel, whatever you want to call it. And that can be quite handy when you're needing to set up new groups so that you want to control different lights or different doors or whatever you want to control with it. Over here is this pack's version of the button panel. It has the four buttons and then the extra space where you can access the control panel from just like the vanilla set, just with a different design. If you look over here at this side, we've got a console with a seat, and all of these ones with seats can be used just like cockpits. This one is quite similar to the small panel cockpit that's in the vanilla set. You can hop in and you can actually fly from this seat. And from first person, you'll have a pretty clear view. You can also fly from these ones. Although I wouldn't recommend this particular one as a actually fly through from first person cockpit. You can kind of make out on the screen a bit of a display that looks sort of like a planet. This used to be a lot more opaque and used to look a lot more like 
this screen directly above us. In fact, it may even be almost identical. I think it uses the same texture even. And if you have a look at that one, you can imagine that much information directly where you're trying to fly might be a little distracting. So there's a second version, which is this one, which has information that looks a little bit more like a heads up display. Again, with the change in transparencies of glass, this has affected these displays so that they're not quite as clear as they once were, which is a bit of a shame because it was pretty cool having this transparent or translucent display with heads up type information on it when you were in first person. It just created an extra degree of immersion that's been lost since it became more transparent. There are also these overhead displays. There's two different types. There are these four small panels and then these three larger ones. Those two small panels down there, they're actually connected to this flight seat. These three larger panels are connected to the wall by an armor segment, I suppose you'd call it. So you can mix and match them for whatever look you're going for and whatever fits the space that you've got. So there you have it, Colt's Command Console Pack. Definitely one of my favorite, actually check that, it is my favorite block addition to the game, bar none. Next thing we're going to look at is the animated interaction mod by Digi. This one's pretty nice. It adds a little bit of immersion to the game, but has a convenient side effect of fixing some of the problems with cockpit mods in the game. Every time Keen changes the player models, something seems to go wrong, and a few times this mod has fixed them. If we switch over to spectator mode and then press F9 so that we can control our character, you can see when I interact with this button, I reach out and I point with my finger like I'm pressing on a button. Unfortunately that button doesn't really work. We can also see this from first person, particularly if we look a little bit down and go into the G menu. You can see behind our menu we've got our hand and our wrist device. And as we click on different menu items, he'll actually tap on that pad. It's immersive, it's cool, it doesn't take anything away from the game, and even more conveniently, there have been a few times where control seats like this one have actually been broken by Keen. Where what ended up happening was the player character ended up hovering above the seat. But when I've used the animated interaction mod, it's actually fixed those problems. And because of that pattern, I've used this mod in pretty much every single world I've had because it doesn't take anything away. It just adds some immersion and corrects some errors that have otherwise been introduced. All in all, it's pretty cool. One of the other things you'll notice is if you interact with anything that connects to the control panel or console, your character will string out a wire to connect to it and then again, clicky clicky on his little wrist pad thing as you go through the menu. It's all just a nice bit of fun to add to the game. The final mod I want to take a look at today is my favorite planet that's been added. This one is by Dr. Octagonopus and it's called Dantis. There are a few reasons to like this planet. So let's take a look. Let's spawn it relatively close so we don't have to fly too far. Yeah, we'll pop it up there. Let's hop into Spectator because it's going to take a long time to get there otherwise. Where's the planet? There it is. This is an Earth-like planet in some regards in that there's oxygen, there's 1G of gravity, it functions well at about 120 kilometers, and there's ice and all the usual minerals in it. However, You'll notice once you get down to ground level, it's pretty open wide. There are these wide open desert plains going all the way around the planet. Then you head into these awesome steep cliff sides and little hidden valleys with some alien foliage and plant life in them. According to the description, these are living off underground rivers that are frozen 
And that's where you can also find your ice on Dantus. It's underneath all of the green zones. One of the nice things about Dantus that isn't immediately apparent is that because these green areas are actually fairly sparse and fairly isolated, performance wise for people who struggle on planets, this is one of the better Earth-like planets that you can actually use. With most of the foliage settings turned down like grass and things like that, you'll actually find that there's very little here that can cause performance drops even before they started their optimization run of updates. It's one of the few planets I can even get to load on my terrible laptop that I sometimes use as a third character for Machinima. The nice thing is to have an oxygen rich planet that doesn't hit your performance too hard so that you can play on an Earth like with the minimum recommended. One of the things I find quite cool about Dantus is these extremely elevated hilltops. They are so high up that you are actually in a thin part of the atmosphere. You can see on my HUD that it is saying O2 low. And while I'm up here, I am so elevated that the airs begin to become thin. It's kind of the Everest of space engineers. And also, that's a pretty sweet view from a mountain top. Building a base up here, you will have some of the best views in the game. Watching the sun set or sunrise from up here, that's spectacular. Dr. Octagonopus has to be one of the most prolific planet makers in the Space Engineers modding community. He has created some amazing designs. This one has always been my favourite, but there are some others out there with truly spectacular scenery in them. He's come up with ideas that are unique, that are special, and that allow you to create a solar system with some really varied planet and moon designs. Dantus is, according to his recommendation, which would be based off the resolution of the textures that he's used for the planet, meant to be 120 kilometers. It still looks reasonable if you make it a bit smaller. It is best at this size, but if you make it smaller for performance reasons, it does still work. It's just that these mountain formations look a little bit, well, less grandiose. They don't have quite the same grandeur as they've got when you build the planet to, when you spawn the planet in at this size. One other point to mention about Dantus is that these cliff sides create a really cool opportunity to build a base a little something like this overhanging glass filled rooms that give you this expansive view over the desert plains. Dantus also comes with its own moon in the same mod pack. This one I believe is meant to be spawned at 19 kilometers. It's called Suti and it's the one you can see on the left here. The one on the right is the regular earth like moon. From a distance they're fairly similar they've both got ice on their poles they're both gray rocky barren lands. But if you look on the standard moon, it's very much like Earth's moon. There's some small craters, it's all pretty rough. This one looks a bit different. This one, the craters are more like canyons. And you could make some pretty awesome secret hide hideout bases in them. Tucked away in the depths of the shadows. And then you've got these very flat plains with some large craters in them. Great for moon buggies. I can see myself having some fun jumping off some of these canyon edges or trying to build a jump to get all the way across. Doing some evil Knievel on Zsuti's 0.25 standard earth gravity. That low gravity should make it pretty easy to get back off the moon and down to your planet or up to asteroids, whatever you're doing and it adds some nice variety to the moons available. 
If you look through some of the other designs by Dr. Octagonopus, you'll notice that most of them are paired with a moon or are set up in a system where they're supposed to work together and complement one another. There's almost always in the description a suggested size for the planets, for the moons. And I think that's all pretty cool because it means you end up with something that's as the designer intended or gives you a bit of a better guide on how to put them together in the way that the terrain maps were meant to be laid out. I really can't say enough kind words about Dr. Octagonopus and the amount of work he's put into all of this stuff. So check some of it out for yourself. As always, there's going to be plenty more to come. So I'll see you then.